Well, it's good to do Christmas at the movies. We've definitely been uh, taking a walk down memory lane, checking out some of these classic films. Last week, It's a Wonderful Life. The week before that, anybody remember what we did? The Christmas Story. And this week, we get the chance to take a look at A Christmas Carol. Now, chances are that when I say A Christmas Carol, that means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Some of you are straight up old school, and it's nothing but Charles Dickens. Right? It comes out in print. Others of you, you know, it's Jim Carrey, it's animated. Uh, but we're going to take it back a few years to one of the first movies made uh, about a Christmas carol. And it brings to my mind the idea of time travel. How many of you think it would be cool to time travel? Anybody? How many of you have actually done it? Anybody ever... Nobody. You see, so many people do it in the movies. I just thought maybe I was missing the boat. So if you could go to anywhere or any when in time, back or forward, where would you go? Anybody have any ideas on that? Have you been giving it some thought? No one? You think it'd be cool to travel, but you have no idea where you'd go. Well, that's a waste of a time machine. Man. The DeLorean is just going to look cool, but it's going to do nothing for you, right? So I remember time travel in such a way that it actually transports me in time. Because when I was a kid, we didn't eat out at restaurants very often. But more often than not, if we went, it was to the Pizza Hut. And so we, when I walk into Pizza Hut today, like just that smell alone, like boom, transported in time. And Pizza Hut used to give out some really cool toys for kids. I remember having some Land Before Time puppets. But, but back to the future. Do you remember the sunglasses? Anybody here old enough to remember the sunglasses that you would get? They had little lids over them or little blinders on them. They were really cool and strange. But that was Back to the Future, right? And so in Back to the Future... Even if the DeLorean doesn't travel in time, it's still a really cool looking car. I mean, it's got the whole Lamborghini doors on it that open and shut to the sides. Man, it was just a slick car. Well, I think that the, uh, probably one of the closest things I've come to traveling in time is actually when I was coming back from India a couple months ago. And so we get on the plane in Delhi and we began to fly west. Now, as we're flying, there's a, a screen in front of us on the, the headrest of the person in front of us. And you could watch movies. You could listen to music. There's lots of different gadgets you can do. But one of them allowed you to track your flight, which sounds really cool unless it's like a 15-hour flight. And then that whole, are we there yet, kicks in. Believe me, I was there. But you could see on this display like a, a graphic of the world. And you could see where the sun was shining and where it was not shining. You could see where it was day and night. And so on the screen, in time, you could watch this move across the, the map of the country. Now that sounds cool, but as we were on this plane and we were headed west, the sun actually was rising behind us. And so as we were, were flying, it wasn't until we were almost at the end of our 15-hour flight that we began to see sunlight. And so it was like we were going back in time. And to magnify that even more, there was this little digital clock up in the corner. And every once in a while, we would lose an hour. Unless you're in Saudi Arabia, then you lose a half an hour. That's just strange. But you lose that time, you lose the sunlight, and it's like you're going back in time. And then you get here and you go, man, I did. I missed a whole night's sleep getting here. But I want to suggest to you guys today that if you've been in a car, you've actually experienced a little bit of time travel. I mean, you think about all the things that you experience as you're walking along the road, but in a car, you're going that much faster, right? And in a split instant, you can look in a mirror or you can turn around and you can see where you've been. You can look out the side windows and you can see where you are. Or you can look out the front glass and you see where you're going to be. So like in a moment, you are past, present, and future. Boom, right there. And how you choose to drive in the present affects your future in a hurry. 
right? The way that somebody has behaved in the past may affect your present desire to swerve. You know, so you got to be paying attention. Well, A Christmas Carol is kind of a time travel movie. Taking it into the element of sci-fi here a bit. And so in this movie, we are introduced to a character by the name of Scrooge. We all know him because we refer to those people that just don't seem to be happy around Christmas time like they're just a big Scrooge, right? Oh, bah, humbug, right? And so in those moments that Scrooge is living his life, he doesn't realize how much his life is impacted by his past, how much it's affecting others in his present, or what kind of outcome that's going to have on his future. But in the intercession of ghosts, spirits, he's able to get a glimpse like none of us ever have at all three elements of life. Now, Scrooge is a term that actually means to be a miser, to be, you know, self-indulgent, to be a money chaser. You're all about you. And that was definitely Scrooge. Listen to these words. So some people came along at Christmas time to collect some charitable contributions to give to the poor. And Scrooge's response to this is, I don't make merry at Christmas. I can't afford to make idle people merry. <laughs> the, the people were just kind of st- set aback by this whole thing. And they're like, but, but what? Some of these people could die. And Scrooge, you know that that had to cut him to the heart, but it didn't. Like he just right back on to it. On goes his rant. If they would rather die, they better just do it and decrease the surplus population. Wow, you're a great guy. Can't wait to work for you. Right? And that's kind of the, the situation that Bob Cratchit was stuck in. But we see that in Scrooge's demeanor, he gets the opportunity to get visited by an old friend. The friend is Jacob Marley, not to be confused with Bob Marley. Two different people, right? There's no dreads, no Jamaican flag in the background, no funny smoke coming out the side. This is Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley worked with Scrooge and they were, they were doing their business thing and he shares with Scrooge kind of where he made some mistakes and gives him an opportunity to change his life. Take a look at this clip. Why are you bitter? I wear the chain I forged in life. I made it link by link and yard by yard. I girded it on to my own free will and to my own free will. I wore it. You have my sympathy. Ah. You do not know the weight and length of strong chain you bear yourself. It was full as heavy and as long as this, seven Christmas Eves ago, and you have labored on it since her. It is a ponderous chain. Mark me! In life, my spirit never rolled beyond the limits of our money-changing home. Now I am doomed to wander without rest or peace. Incessant torture, remorse. But it was only that you were a good man of business, Jacob. Business! Mankind was my business. Their common welfare was my business. And it is at this time of the rolling year I suffer most. Anybody get creeped out about this as a kid? Anybody still creeped out a little bit by it? Yeah, watch the Jim Carrey version. It gets worse. So Jacob Marley, he comes back and he's wearing these chains. And he's, he's telling Scrooge that I have forged these chains link by link. It's kind of like all of the, the things that I've done wrong are making this chain that's holding me back. And so it brings up, I think, a very good question for you and I. What kind of chains are we wearing? What kind of chains are we forging? Now think about this in your own life. I mean, you can start pretty simplistic, like, yeah, I've been kind of selfish, you know, just looking after my own good. Okay, I, I've, I've lied a time or two. I've maybe cheated in business once or twice. Got that addiction that kind of keep coming back to that one. I've got these people that, 
man, they just tick me off. The hatred inside of my life just keeps growing. I, I get more and more bitter. I have this unforgiveness that lives inside of me. I've been chasing after the stuff I want, the money I need, the job I need, the house I need, the car I want, the getting the point. And so in life, we have these chains and the chains that the Scrooge is finding out about are, are there on his friend, Jacob Marley. And he tells Scrooge that actually the chain that he is wearing is just as long, well, it was. Seven years ago. Seven years ago it was the same length and he's been adding on to it since. But Scrooge does what you and I oftentimes try to do. We try to rationalize our behavior, right? And so he turns to his friend Jacob and he goes, yeah, but you were a good man of business. Jacob doesn't find any consoling there. There's no comfort in his words. He actually says that to Scrooge, like, I have no comfort to give you. You see, mankind is my business. Giving charity is my business. Helping other people, that's my business. That's what I should have been doing. But I was looking out for me. And I was looking out for all the stuff that I wanted and all of the deception in my life. And I wonder if we're to answer honestly, what would we say to the question, what kind of chains are you forging? How long, how encompassing, how inhibiting are those chains that you wear? Uh, some of you, you come in today and your chains are pretty short. And I think the reason your chains are pretty short is because you found Jesus. And you, you keep adding these links, but you keep coming back to Jesus and Jesus keeps taking them away. And you're like, woo, working on another one for you, buddy. Woo, here you can have this one too, woo. Some of us, we haven't figured that out. Some of us, we're just adding link by link by link. The thing about chain is it gets kind of heavy. It gets kind of cumbersome. It weighs us down. When we're strapped to chain, it's pretty hard to move forward. We don't move with the same pace. We don't move with the same freedom. We're, we're always locked to the past, but rarely free to move to the future. I want to take a look at 1 John chapter 3. It's verses 16 to 18. We've been looking at a lot of the same passages that we've been going through this series. And so in 1 John chapter 3, page 661 in the Bibles, we provide if you want to follow along. We hear these words. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. And so it's obvious that Jacob was living a life that was not loving to other people. And you could say the same is true of Scrooge at this moment. And so he's faced with a choice, a challenge. Will I continue to do what I've always done or will I change and begin to do things differently? Well, the first ghost comes upon him and we see that it's definitely getting his attention. He doesn't know how to respond. First Jacob and now this ghost of the past. And I think that maybe through it all, you and I, we have a, our own ghost that's trying to get our attention. Maybe it's the ghost of our past that's saying, oh, hey, remember that time you did that thing? Yeah, I remember that. I'd like to think that we have a different ghost, though. The Holy Ghost. The saying, yeah, that time? What time? That thing that you did? Yeah, don't do that again. Right? You have peace. You have comfort. To go and experience freedom, but, but if not, we have this other past that's holding us back. And so as we look at Scrooge's life, we see, we see a boy that was really happy, right? But he went through some stuff. Does this maybe resemble your life? 
Like you started at one point, you were pretty happy, things were, were pretty good. And then, stuff. Right, so he, he loses his mom. She passes on his dad. He's mean. He gets sent away to boarding school. And while he's at boarding school, he just feels alone. All the other kids go home at Christmas, and there he is, all by himself, not wanting to go back to his abusive dad. He begins to pursue after monetary gain. Along the way, he finds this woman, thinks they're going to spend their life together. But his greed continues to grow and he continues to pursue after these false things to the point where she says, you know what? You're not the same man that you were when we first got together. You are free of your commitment, your engagement to me. Go and chase after your money. I'm not going to be a part of it. And so he's broken by his past decisions. By the past decisions of other people and how they've affected him. And if you were to receive that gift today, the ghost of your past, what kind of things would be brought to your attention? What kind of pain would you have caused? What kind of pain would have been caused to you? What kind of joys and frustrations would have you experienced along the way? What kind of past hurts do you bring to the table today? What kind of chains are weighing you down? I think with Scrooge we see that not only is he weighed down by those things, he begins also to build a wall. You and I, we, we can do this too, right? We get hurt. We don't want hurt again. So we build a wall. And we say, you know what? I'm never going around that person again. Wall. I'm never putting myself in that situation again. Wall. I'm never going down that road, making that choice, saying that thing, doing that stuff. Wall. And as we build these walls, maybe not link by link, but brick by brick, we hide on the other side and Scrooge is, is left there in his office alone and afraid because he's unwilling to let anybody in. And not only would I ask you what kind of past you bring to the table, what kind of hurts, but what kind of walls have you built? Where have you built those walls in your life? Now Scrooge, he tried to numb these past pains by the pursuit of personal pleasure and money. And I don't think money is the only thing that we chase. We chase it a lot, though. What are some of the things that you have found yourself chasing after? Is it the next high? The next fix? The next gadget? The next relationship? What kind of things are you pursuing after in an effort to just numb that past pain? Well, those were things that Scrooge was left to figure out. And before he could catch his breath, in came the ghost of Christmas present. The dude looked kind of like Santa. You know which one I'm talking about? And so in comes the gift of Christmas present. And normally in our present situation, we see the world around us. But Scrooge was given windows into worlds that existed in the same time frame, but in a different context. And so he got to look in at the Cratchit family. Bob, his employer, and the family that he was providing for. He got to see how poor they were, how they had a child of special needs. He got to see that how even amidst the poverty that they were truly rich, that Bob was, was sharing a toast to his deadbeat boss, despite what his wife had to say about it. Nothing but the best. He goes on to see many other things and many other ways that his attitude and his behaviors, his actions impact the people around him. And that's true for you and I. We have our past, we have our stuff, we have our chain links, we have our walls, we have our attitudes and our actions, and we think that we're just maybe protecting ourselves, providing for ourselves, numbing our pain. But in those moments, we're actually in the present impacting the lives of other people. 
And so I wonder if you've ever given thought to how you're affecting other people today. We've been taking a look at our, our key passage, which is in Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 30. And when Jesus was asked by the religious leaders, you know, if you could summarize all of the law and give us just the one thing, what would it be? He said, love the Lord your God with basically all that you have. All your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Every ounce of your being, love God. And here's the bonus kicker, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so you need to go out and you need to do this. But the reality was the life that Scrooge was living was not loving towards anybody but himself. And you could argue that he really wasn't even loving himself. And maybe that's the kind of present that you're stuck in. And maybe you're forced to answer the question that Scrooge was faced with is, do I like the kind of me I am today? Do you like the person you are today? I hope that you do, but, but my guess is that there's more than one person here today that doesn't like the person that they are. They're chained to their past. They're chained to their decisions. They're changed, chained to their hurts, to their addictions. And living in the present brings nothing but pain. And people who are hurt, man, they, they hurt people, don't they? That's me. Like when I'm in pain and my wife tells me this, I don't want to be around you. That's true. Like I can get consumed in myself. And I can get consumed and leave me alone right now. And I can push away or I can cause pain. And I wonder if maybe I'm not speaking to someone here today. Well then, comes along the ghost of Christmas future. Kind of the grim reaper looking dude. Now the ghost of Christmas future just kind of brings him right up to his own death. Right? Maybe that death is actually his funeral. Maybe it's his gravesite, depending on the version that you look at. But one thing is for sure, Scrooge is a goner. He's done. And I don't think that that alone breaks his heart, because I think you and I, we're smart enough to realize that each one of us is going to die at some point. But it's what kind of legacy are we going to leave behind us that really matters? Are people going to remember my name? Are they going to celebrate my accomplishments? Are they going to appreciate my life? And Scrooge knew that when he was faced with this, this situation, the people didn't even care that he was gone. All they wanted to do was argue over what of his stuff they got to keep for themselves. And so it was missed opportunities probably that were cutting to the heart the most. And Scrooge asks this question. He says, is this the shadow of things that will be or things that may be only? And to put that in maybe a language that you and I would understand a little bit better, is this future, is this like set in stone? Is this the way it's going to be? Or is there another option? Is, is there another alternative? Can something change here? And Scrooge is left with a choice. Do I continue doing what I've always done or do I change and try something different? And so he runs back and he, he gets a chance to live his life with gratitude, a life of generosity, a life of hope. But I think that this story for you and I tells us it's not too late to change. First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. Guys, if I'm speaking to you today and this is the weight that you bear, I want you to know that Jesus has stepped into this world to give you hope. He stepped in to break those chains the guilt can be gone. The pain can be over. The opportunities can be new. But you're faced with a choice. Do you continue doing what you've always done? Or do you change and let Jesus 
take the chains. Philippians in chapter 2, Paul is writing to the church in Philippi. And he has a pretty powerful message for the group of people there. He's talking about Jesus. He says, so if there's any encouragement in Christ, if any comfort in love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord with the one mind, Verse 3, do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Man, this was the, the message that Scrooge needed to hear. And maybe this is the message for you today. That it's time to break free of those chains and stop worrying about you. And start living generously and impacting the lives of the people around you. And he offers up this illustration which should hit home for each of us. He says this, Have this mind among yourselves which is yours in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form God, did not consider equality with God something that you and I could grasp. But he made himself nothing. Taking the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, loved you enough that in your sin, in my sin, he stepped down out of heaven and became nothing. He took our chains and he put them on himself and went to the cross to die in our place. And so you and I, we have the same mind and in humility, we consider others better than ourselves. Chapter 3, verse 7. But whatever gain I had, I count as loss for the sake of Christ. Uh, Paul has just went on this exposition of all the great things he's accomplished in life. And he's not looking for an attaboy. He's like, you guys want to brag about all this stuff you've done? Look at my list of accomplishments. Here it is. Boom. It's nothing. Like when it comes to being an elite person, an elite Jewish man, I have I have all this stuff. I have all of the credentials. And compared to Christ, it's nothing. Let's read on. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes through the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, one where the righteousness from God that depends on faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Guys, no matter what you've done in your past, no matter how good or how bad, compared to Jesus, it's nothing. Compared to Jesus, it's, it's just rubbish. It's trash. 